I'm Tim Herrera with the Sacramento County Office of Education with another Teacher of the Year profile. Right now we're speaking with Bob Krongeyer, who is the Teacher of the Year from the Robles School District. Congratulations, Bob. Thank you, Tim. Well, so tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us uh, you know, where you teach. Tell us what you teach. Okay. I teach um, third through sixth grade gifted and talented students at Taylor Street School in the Robles School District. It's a district program, so I have kids from throughout the district that mm -hmm. are there. Uh, and I've been doing that for about three years now. I've taught first through sixth grades in the last 23 years. Mm -hmm. So you teach GATE? So I teach GATE. Okay, yeah. so tell, tell me what's involved in that. So, <laughs> um, well, they teach me as much as I try to teach them, but it, um, it's, they are amazing scholars, so I do everything I can to just make sure that they are challenged and are um, excited about learning and that they're, um, you know, achieving as, mm -hmm. as well as they can. Is that a challenge for you to be on your toes all the time? It is, yeah, it absolutely is, but it's a challenge I love, it's, it's rejuvenating. So is it, is it when you're teaching the, through the GATE program, are you teaching special classes? Or are you teaching specific classes or is it? Um, so I teach, um, we're self-contained classroom, so it's an all-day okay. GATE program. Okay. But I teach uh, everything except uh, math to the fifth and sixth graders. And then there's an hour and a half block where the third and fourth graders come to me for English language arts. And then the um, fifth and sixth graders go to the third and fourth grade gate teacher for math. Okay. Now, you, you, if I remember correctly, your specialty is writing, teaching students it, writing? Yeah. Well, I, I uh, am co-director of the writing project. And so up until this coming year, I've worked in the classroom four days a week. And then I, um, I work at UC Davis for the writing project on that fifth day on Ex Friday. Explain what the writing project is because it's very interesting. So the writing, I think so, the writing <laughs> project is... I think so too, that's why I asked. Well, thank you, Tim. Okay. Uh, I th think it's, it's great because it's teachers teaching teachers. I mean, that's the basic philosophy. Uh, started in Berkeley um, over 30 years ago, and it's, um, we have a, a lots of different ways that we provide professional development for teachers. We also um, encourage teacher leadership so that we have lots of teachers that are out there um, helping and supporting each other in the profession. And we also, we do some things where we work with um, students and families as well through family writing nights or um, young writers camps, things like that. So what's it like to get, you know, to, to find um, uh, some students at the young age that you have and know that they have the gift of writing and how you want to work with them? So, you know, that's, it's funny you should ask that because I've been fortunate to work with a lot of very gifted writers. But I also have discovered that all of my students, even the ones who don't particularly enjoy writing, become writers if I create that environment. So. Um, I'm a strong believer in making sure that the kids are writing every day, that uh, we have a writer's workshop so that there's choice built in, they can write about what they want, as well as, you know, some guidance from me. Mm -hmm. um, but it, kids who, maybe when I, before I had this magic <laughs> in my tool belt, uh, who might not have become very prolific writers or even as competent writers, mm -hmm. um, excel with this environment. So I would say that all of my students are great writers. Mm -hmm. they, it's, it's a wonderful thing. And I can say the same thing about reading and everything else because um, there's just, there's so much going on that, you know, they, they excel. And how do you express to them the importance of writing as a communication skill? and, and why they need to really sharpen it. So I'm, <laughs> my, my colleagues will laugh when they uh, hear me say the G word, which is genre. I'm a strong believer as well in having my students understand that in any kind of 
situation, even what we're doing right now. You have to think about your audience, you have to think about your purpose, you have to think about the content, what it is that you want to say, mm -hmm. um, and, and then you think about the, the context, where is it happening, and then that's going to lead to an appropriate structure. So with that in mind, my students, if they're thinking about those things, no matter what they're doing, they will, they will be uh, more ab better able, <laughs> unlike me, they'll be able to <laughs> express themselves mm -hmm. because um, they'll understand that, hey, this is not a text message, I need to make this a little more formal, or this is um, a very informal chat and I can go ahead and not capitalize and leave out the periods if, as long as my message is, is clear. Mm -hmm. So I think that that has been a really powerful way to um, get my kids not only to understand the importance of, read, of writing, but also reading. And because you can deconstruct text in that way as well as construct. Do you find that um, the increase of students texting has um, influence their writing skills? Um, yes, but not necessarily in a negative way. Mm -hmm. I think it's made them more um, wanting to communicate through writing. So they're actually writing more, even if it is text messaging. And because they're so aware of genre, they know that they have to switch when they're writing an essay, or they're writing a play, or they're writing a mm -hmm. story, or a report. So you teach gate kids, so mm -hmm. they're obviously motivated students. But still, do you find that some of those students are still kind well, of... Well, they're, yeah, okay, they're not th obviously motivated. That's <laughs> the thing, that's the myth, you know? Uh. They, um, there are some kids who don't, they're not just, you know, naturally motivated. So I think part of what my job is is to help them to find the hook into what it is that they're interested in to help them get excited about learning and to become more motivated. Many of them are, but they're, they're, it's not that they're motivated, it's that they're rule followers and they like, the, mm -hmm. um, they like to know what it is that's expected of them and they are high achievers. They're very um, bright, hardworking people. So um, they like seeing what they've been able to produce and, and are able to do. But for some of them, that's not the motivation. That's not enough. It has mm -hmm. to be from somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So just providing lots of opportunities. Um, I, I have a huge now, um, thank you, Karen, a huge class library. <laughs> <laughs> um, so there's lots of different uh, levels of books as well as interests that are covered. And, um, and then I allow a lot of flexibility in when students have learned something and they want to demonstrate their knowledge, I don't necessarily hold them to one way to do that. I have them think about those five things and okay, how are you gonna get me, I'm your audience, how are you gonna get me to understand that I know mm -hmm. what it is uh, that you now know? <laughs> and um, so I can, I, I've had plays and um, you know presentations and little movies and poetry and all kinds of things that I would have never thought to use to demonstrate this knowledge and interesting yeah it is yeah. so what made you become a teacher in the first place what brought you there um, I wanted to be a teacher from the time I was a little guy that I just loved the school stuff, mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> I was one of those rule followers. I was uh -huh. <laughs> the gate kid that, yeah. you know, uh, just liked school. But um, once I became a teacher and I realized how much more obviously complex the whole craft is, um, I realized I was in the right profession and I'm still learning so many things about what it means to be a teacher. But um, I'm, I'm glad I've come this way. <laughs> Well, I know the folks in the Robles School District are, are glad as well. Well, congratulations so. to Bob Krongeyer, the Teacher of the Year for 2013 for the Robles School District. Thanks for talking with us. Thank you, Tim. I appreciate it.